Hello everyone, this is Jessica from grade 10T. I am here to deliver one of the finest speeches in literature, the speech of Marcus Antonius, which was delivered during the funeral of Julius Caesar. Friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil of Intas lives after them, but the good is often teared with their bones. So be it with Caesar. The noble readers had told you that Caesar was ambitious. As it was so, it was a grievous fault and had Caesar grievously answered it. He, under the leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man, and so are they all, honourable man, come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just me, but Buddha says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honourable man. He had bought many captives sold in Rome, whose ransoms did in all coffers fill. Did distant Caesar seem ambitious? When the poor had wept, Caesar had cried. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, Brutus is an honourable man. You all did see that all look recall I twice president making recall which he did twice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, Brutus is an honourable man. I speak not to his approval of what Brutus spoke. But I'm here to speak of what I do know. Oh, judge me, Lord, fit to be beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart's in the coffin, and there with Caesar, and I'm supposed to come back to me. But yesterday, the word of Caesar met us against the whole world, and now lies he there, and none support to do him reverence. Oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and mind to mutiny and rage, I would do Buddha strong, and Cassius strong, who you all know are honorable men. But I'll not do them wrong. I rather just wrong the dead, wrong myself, and wrong you than wrong such honourable men. But here's a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. It's his will. Let part the commoners hear this testament, which pardon me, I do not mean to read, then they would go and kiss his dead wounds, and dip their napkins in his sacred blood. Yeah, I beg a hair of us for memory, and dine mention it with the now will by decreeting it as a rich legacy unto their issue. Have patience, gentle friends. I must not read it. It is not meet you know how much Caesar loved you. You're not wood, you're not stones, but men. And being men, being the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. It is good you know not that you are his heirs, for if you shit, oh, what come of it? Will you be patient? Will you stay a while? I've assured myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honourable men who staggers her stabs, he's I do fear it. Will you compel me then to read the will? Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar and let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend? Will you give me leave? If you have keys, you better shut them now. The old you know this mantle, and with the first time ever since put it on, it was a summer evening in his tent. But then he all came to know why. Look! In this place, when cash is tiger through, see what a render in your scarf come made. To this, the well beloved boot is tapped, and as he plucked his curse still away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it as rushing out as the doors to be resolved. Is Brutus so unkindly knocked or no? The Brutus, as he know, would he was ancient, and judge your gold so dearly if he's loved him. This is the most anthemous cut of all, for the noble Brutus on his tab. In gratitude, Mother Latrita's arms, who had vanished him, and then burst his mighty heart. This mantle muffling up his safe, even the base of Fombe's statue, which all wire and blood, grace his a fill. Oh, what fall was it, my countrymen? Then you and I and all of us fell down, while his bloody oppression first over us. Kind soul, what we be when you behold, perceive Caesar's wounded treasure. Look ye he, he is himself, Ma. As he sees at the tree. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stay you up to such a spartan fit of mutiny. They that have in this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable, and will no doubt with reasons answer you. I come not, friends, to steal your hearts away. I am no orator as Brutus is. But as you know me all, a plain, blunt person that love my friend, and they didn't know full well that they gave me public speak to leave of him. For I neither have wits, nor words, nor words, action, nor utterance, nor power of speech, the stream man's blood, 
I only speak right on. I tell you which you yourselves do know. But if I were Brutus and Brutus Antony, they were an Antony that would rough up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar that would cause the stones of Rome to rise and revolt. Why, friends, you go to do you don't know what? Wherein had Caesar deserved your loves? Alas, you know not, I must tell you. For God or will, I told you all. He is the will, and under Caesar's seal, to every Roman, to every several man, he gave seventy-five drachmas. Moreover, he had loved you all his walks, his private arbors, his newly planted orchards, and his side timber. He loved them for you, and for all your hairs forever, common pleasures, to walk abroad and recreate yourself. He was a Caesar, and when comes such an other?